Hey, what's up everybody? Shane Presley here with the Rock Paper Podcast to tell you about my friend's music record shop. Find them down in the Grove at 4191A Manchester Avenue, uh, located right between the demo and the ready room. This Friday, an all-new music happy hour with new records from Rush, Kurt Cobain, Montage of Heck, Girl Sweatshirt, uh, Ryan Adams, 1989, Humphreys McGee, Sam Smith, Anthrax, Mac Miller, uh, and all sorts of other stuff. So come out, get you some new records. Uh, Live in-store performance uh, this Saturday, December 12th, with Mitchell Ferguson and Nicole Grace. That's uh, sponsored by Four Hands Brewery and The Gramophone. Two to four. Find them online, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, musicrecordshop.com. Hey! We're the Good Deeds, and you're (laughs) listening to Rock Rock Paper Paper Podcast!
Hey, what's going on everybody? Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast, coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri, hanging out in Drew's living room with uh, Ema Gowan and the Good Deeds. Welcome to the show, everybody. Oh, hey. <laughs> wow, that was a resounding. So excited. Oh. <laughs> we are excited. That's true. If we promise. <laughs> Do you want us to give you a better, like, woohoo? Yeah, we can probably do that. One, two, three, woo! Yeah! Excitement! <laughs> <laughs> Organized excitement. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, uh, you know, when you go to the rock show, the whole thing. I can't hear you! Yeah. <laughs> it's time to get into our songs. <laughs> I can't hear you. It's us. Oh. No, we, oh. Do that. we do that at folk shows. Just, yeah. I can't hear you! And they're like, what does he want to hear? <laughs> Show. Are we like supposed to be cool? Yeah, you're playing acoustic instruments. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to stand as perfectly still. <laughs> and not be very close to the stage. I should be at least two feet away from the stage at a folk show. Right. <laughs> no, get up here! <laughs> uh, yeah, so I guess uh, uh, that's where we first uh, first was introduced, was at a folk show. I went to see you guys all at uh, Off-Broadway a little bit ago with uh, Letter to Memphis and Ruth the Cuff, mm-hmm. and uh, fantastic line though. That was a that was a great show. It was so fun. So many strings. It was so oh, amazing. Yeah. All of the strings. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the best. It shows you what you can do with your music awesome. degree, kids. Yeah. <laughs> Being a band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tuition dollars hard at work. Or you could just pick up the harp. <laughs> right? Yeah. Ruth A. Cuff picked it up five you years got ago. Extra 11, yeah. 12 grand on you. Cool baby. Right. For a cheap one. <laughs> She's so good, though. So pretty. Yeah, that was incredible. Was yeah, but so, we're good too. Yeah, that was the first I saw uh, Ruth, and uh, and first I'd seen anybody play a harp on stage. So mm-hmm. that was Me too. that was uh, fantastic. That mm-hmm. was a great show. Very unique. Yeah. And uh, Letter to Memphis, our old friends of the show, I've um, recorded uh, with uh, them at, at uh, Paul's studio. Mm-hmm. So nice. Uh, but yeah, they. Uh, that was fun. That was a lot of. That was a good time. Yeah. Even for a Sunday night. Yeah. We had yeah a good especially crowd. Especially for a Sunday night. Yeah, maybe that especially. That was what was coolest about it. Yeah. yeah, it was a big crowd for a Sunday. We were really happy with that. All local yeah. bill. Everybody came out. A lot of new, a lot of new fans, a lot of new faces. A lot of support. That was yeah. Really. Made Ruth awesome. was cool. That was awesome. Yeah. And John, he's awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Very, very Agreed. Cool. Yeah. Um, but you got another show coming up. If anybody missed that one, they, uh, there's another great opportunity. To see you all live coming up here uh, January 9th. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At the demo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're playing with Typhoon Jackson and Scarlett Tanager. Yeah. That'll be awesome. Mm-hmm. I just looked up Scarlett Tanager earlier today. Mm-hmm. And it was like very, very pleasant. Yeah, yeah, they're great. Yeah. I didn't realize really how great. awesome they were. They're fantastic and they're like the nicest people. <laughs> it's yeah. like Equally kind of... as nice are Typhoon Jackson, who we yeah. love. Right. They're our band besties. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, uh, Shout out to Shannon. Hey, girl. <laughs> hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, girl. Hey. Um, yeah. Just had to get that recorded. Had to get it. Had to get it. Uh, yeah, I, I um, I don't, I'm not familiar with either of them, so uh, that'll be Then fun. you should come out. Yeah. That's yeah. A perfect for reason. For sure. Mm-hmm. But that's, uh, I've, you know, I've talked about it multiple times on the show, but it's kind of the, the whole beauty of doing this show as well, like, I mean, I, starting it, I felt I had a fair grasp of St. Louis music, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and um, especially uh, more in the alternative rock scene. That's where sure. a lot of my friends were at. And but as you know, getting it, diving into this, like, and knocking out a couple of these, and then it started to network out farther and farther. And I realized I had no idea what, like, you know, that there's, and that's made the show very exciting for me to yeah. be able to help present. If I didn't know about it, you know, and I'm sure there's hundred thousands or whatever you know more people that don't know about it either so i'm trying to help spread the good word nice i think it's similarly being in the band has also done that for me too right. sort of just us performing mm-hmm. out has opened our eyes and my eyes personally to music i didn't know even existed here in st louis which mm-hmm. is awesome yeah if you guys aren't friends with him on facebook if him you're like bored on a night <laughs> and you just look at his Facebook, <laughs> he knows where every single event in, in St. Louis is happening. Even though I don't even know where you find some of the stuff that you find. Well, yeah, a lot of the. What's uh, your resource? 
Oh, yeah. That's Everywhere. top secret. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you would know why. You see one of his statuses. There's, yeah. They're like 50 and 60 bands yeah. long on like a yeah. Tuesday night. It's yeah. Like, I, uh, not, not, music a, anywhere a lot of it's just, you know, being a super fan. I follow all, a lot of the groups and, and individuals in the bands on Facebook and, and various things. And uh, so then, like, you start accumulating all their uh, RSVPs. So I, uh, I or RSVP to a lot of the events and then come, you know, that day I try to consolidate it all and to make it a, into a nice list and people seem to really dig it, you know, let alone uh, the musicians, they appreciate yeah, you plug the love, up, yeah. but yeah. Then you, uh, a lot of people are like, man, you know, like, you know, thanks for doing that. I mean, if they like, don't go, at least the people are reading it and stuff. Friend, like, friends from out of town that come in town, I... Tell to look at your page, yeah. Because I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. The <laughs> like, yeah. Somehow, yeah. it's uh, and then I, you know, I do plug the national shows as well on there, but for the most part, a good majority of the list is all local entertainment. Awesome. So, yeah, that's um, awesome. So yeah, and then that's uh, you know, I'm I'm a big supporter of supporting local. So uh, I believe uh, you know we should uh, should be a lot more people going. Supporting our local ex and Hell yeah. you know, instead yeah. of instead of selling out Verizon on a Friday night or something, yeah, okay. yeah paying hundred dollars or whatever for a top show. dollar for a yeah. nosebleed seat yeah. at Scott Trey. Oh yeah, when you could when you could be close to the stage at a folk show. Yeah, sure. <laughs> we like you there. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, you know, from my personal experience, I've met some of my best friends now from just going to shows. Like mm-hmm. I run into a lot of the same people. At a lot of the same shows, mm-hmm. we get to talk, and we, you know, even if you don't, you know, if it's your first time, people are welcome to talk because you already got a common interest. You're at the same show, so mm-hmm. it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, easy conversation. Yeah, but yeah, I, uh, I love it. So I love live entertainment, and, uh, and you guys, like I said, watching you guys was a lot of fun that night. Um, that uh, uh, I don't know if I'm not blowing any secret but you guys did uh threw in that crimea river and the, and the river. i thought that was really cool like right just on. the way you uh you know mashed them together like, it's kind of fun just the process kind of happens organically when you are writing songs and you just start hearing you know what that sounds like that sounds like this and then you just start playing around and sure Figure out how you make it your own. Yeah. <laughs> or that's dick ex- it around, maybe, more accurately. Oh, that's, that's what I would say. I would say dick it around. I would say dick it around. I think, like, people want to hear something they know. Yeah. We, like, want to acknowledge that. Yeah. Maybe just in a, in a creative But in our sure. way. Yeah. Yeah. Throw it in my pocket. Oh, there goes the uke. Uke? Uke? Uke. 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 Whatever. If you're any if you're better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we know that when I hear it, so we want to put it like, like, and relate it to one of our tunes, and mm-hmm. it makes yeah. it more fun for us. Yeah, I think people respect it more. I would if I was watching. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, especially yeah, to, to uh, see mostly uh, strings, you know, mm-hmm. doing uh, what was dropping beats, right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so to speak. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, it was very entertaining. I. Uh, thinking of that like I just had my idea the other day um, you know thinking about songs that kind of sound to get you know similar or whatever mm-hmm. and like um, I was thinking if I was in a cover band or something how fun it would be like uh, to uh, like a brown eyed girl like the you know the yeah, yeah like the sh- sha na na stuff or whatever <laughs> but like yeah when it goes to that part then you just go into like Guns and Roses where he's like come to our next show come to our next show folks I get a good mashup treasure trove of ideas I just I would that would be perfect you guys can pull that off alright we'll think about that and I will let Jackson Howard know about that yeah I bet he gets right on that absolutely shout out to Jackson work on your uh Oh God! What's his name? Axel Rose. Thank you. Rose. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that line. Oh, yeah. I'll oh, plug the other show. Drew, go ahead. Uh, go on. Just, Nobody heard you. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Jackson Howard actually... has a full length album coming out January second. Yeah. There you go. There it is. Uh, He's performing it off Broadway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be the release. Emily Wallace is going to open. She's amazing. She's yeah. great. 
Yeah, she's super great. I've talked about her on the show and like been trying. I've been really trying to get her on the show. Just um, hasn't worked out. But every time, every time I see her, I'm like, hey. Come on, yeah, come on. Come on. Yeah, so, uh, the good these, deeds did it. Now it's your yeah, turn, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. One of these days, <laughs> we're, we're a trendsetter. Yeah. Episode. I'm sure she was. I'm sure she was. <laughs> sure, this is a great person. <laughs> but I, uh, a memory that stands out with um, seeing her live at Oyster Bar was um, she did uh, Erica Badu's Tyrone. Oh, you know, oh Tyrone. Tyrone. Oh. Yeah, it was just, like, you know, just her and a guitar, and I was like blown away. This is <laughs> yeah. So I was uh, very impressed. <laughs> um, but we yeah. should uh, we should probably drop also that um, we kind of thinking about moving away from being called Ian McGowan and the Good Deeds and make it easier for you all to remember. Call us the Good Deeds. Yeah. The, good deeds. Yeah. Yeah. the Good Deeds. The Good Deeds. Ian's How not about that? Yeah. <laughs> Ian only wrote all the songs. <laughs> do, 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 do. Charlie Brown dance. Oh. Walk. Good work. Not dance. Good work. Dance. Should we, uh, since we have been talking so often, should we maybe introduce ourselves? Sure, yeah. Oh, should, yeah, might as well. Uh, Said the type A. Can't stop myself. That's, that's, that's all right. I'll go first, in fact. <laughs> um, I'm Allie Gordon, and I do vocals for The Good Deeds. I am uh, Ian McGowan of Ian McGowan, formerly of Ian McGowan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I play guitar and sing. I'm Nikki Kovalak, and I do five-string fiddle and four-string fiddle, and I do backup vocals, and I did wine glasses at one time. <laughs> yeah. True story. We have it recorded. I should just give up because Drew's got more instruments than me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Drew Lance. I play uh, the cajon, the little box-shaped instrument, and then um, just a little random percussion, and I'll sing here and there. On one foot and the other foot? (laughs) (laughs) One man band, in a way. And I'm Chris Lipsay. I play bass in every way possible. Either. Truth. <laughs> try to steal Nikki's violin parts. <laughs> we all try to steal Nikki's okay, violin so. parts. <laughs> Even Drew. Right, right. Got that cowbell ready. Right. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> uh, so how the, let's, let's talk about a little bit of history of the band. How, how do we uh, form as this Lineup of the group. And that's interesting because I don't think I even remember. No, that's the, story. <laughs> <laughs> the, the good deeds, the origin story. Yeah. But those good deeds don't even know. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, so I started. I kind of started writing a lot of the um, folky stuff. I was in like punk bands and like a math rock band. Um, You're and still in that. I'm still in that uh, that band actually, Bear Cub. But um, I kind of moved towards folky things about. I don't know, five years ago or so, and when I was um, living abroad, and I got back home, and I was like, I kind of want to do something with this. Um, I wasn't really quite sure. I had um, my friend David um, play bass, um, and so I kind of, I threw him some recordings that I had done, and he was interested, and um, I had talked to Nikki who was actually the first person that I had met in college. These are the two um, original members right here, Nikki so, and Ian. Um, True mistake, Bulldog. Oh, uh, Bulldog, what? what? Um, <laughs> and um, Nikki was <laughs> uh, interested enough, and um, then we kind of moved from there. And uh, I, I've, I've always really liked singing, but I, I've always really liked harmonies and having harmonies. Um, and I knew that, um, and at the time, too, I, I didn't feel like my, my vocals were particularly strong because it was something that I had never really done. Um, and so I kind of needed somebody to sing with me, but to also kind of push me a little bit vocally. Um, and that's where Allie comes in. Um, you know, I'm a I mean, pusher. She's in the right way. Right. Just in the nice way. <laughs> just a crazy talented vocalist. Um, and uh, but go on. <laughs> don't oh, tell stop. me more about myself. <laughs> um, and then uh, David. But for, but for a minute, though, we had um, the original vocalist was actually Nikki's yeah. sister, who was ex- also very talented. Mm-hmm. Just a lot of different sound, but she, I definitely had learned some of my vocals from her. So, oh. yeah, and she, I think uh, she had moved to LA briefly, and so wasn't sure when she was going to come back. And um, 
So I was and like, I jumped on it. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I don't even think I finished asking you. I was like, hey, so what about and you? Like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> sing yes, yeah. I'll take it. Yeah, um, and uh, David, um, our our former bassist, um, was a lovely guy, really nice, but um, his wife got a job teaching at Oxford. Um, the university. The university. <laughs> so he was like, "Sorry, dudes, uh, I'm gonna, I'm a piece," and we like couldn't be better. Um, and then it was kind of uh, difficult to find um, a bassist um, in the interim there, just because uh, anybody who plays upright, I think, is is in high demand, and it's just really kind of a pain uh, if you are an all original project and you want to get somebody on board. Right. Um, because so many of them are, are truly working musicians, you know, mm-hmm. they go out and they do a four hour gig, you know, whatever, and mm-hmm. that's their lifestyle, um, and how they make their living. So it, that was kind of a struggle. Um, but we got Chris, um, through Nikki actually, um, I guess you like at a conference had met, no, <laughs> something. Sure. <laughs> We knew Probably. each other existed. Okay. <laughs> I had definitely sent you violin students, and uh, okay. yeah. both yeah. both teachers yeah. for those we, listening. We, the connection was Limburg. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I went to Limburg. He teaches at Limburg. I know people at Limburg. So, she knows people. Yeah. And I found a bassist. Um, and I was to not just a music. bassist. Yeah. A fantastic bassist. Yeah. That's true. Um, Very talented. And so we That's got true. that. And then actually, my speaking of my other. Um, math rock band Bear Cup. We played a show with three other singer songwriter acts. Mind you, we're very loud rock and roll. Very different. Uh, very different. Awesome. Um, but we played with um, Hillary Fitz, um, who Fine. Drew was playing with at the time, and um, he was doing you know doing his you know auxiliary percussion Come thing, thing. that um, just kind of really <laughs> fits in with um, a lot of folk stuff at least in my head and you know it's not overpowering and it's, it's always really tasteful um, and so I talked to him and I was like hey uh, like at the show I was like do you do you want to do something else and do was up for it and sent him the links and he was you know all good to go and he was and, kind of the missing link I yeah think. yeah it, I, well, I think it should be noted that we did try percussion at one point. Yeah, with, with, with John. With, with yeah. John, hey but, John. And, yeah, I actually did not know that. Yeah, yeah a full was, kit actually. A full yeah, drum kit. Kit. it was much different sound. Yeah, oh, yeah. It was very different. Um, and I think, uh, I mean, ultimately it didn't work out for one reason or another. And um, scheduling is hard, y'all. Yeah, oh, that, that and I think a kit would be just a little loud. It yeah, was. It, it, it was, was a little, little overbearing to play uh, just a full set part. Yeah, yeah. it and definitely and was full of talents. Yeah, um, he but, he did a good job. I mean, we really had to right like work I, I with him. But he, like, I, I very oh yeah, it was the drummer at all. It's yeah, just the fact the drums are loud. Yes, and, and actually at the time, I think he he played maybe two or three shows with us, mm-hmm. um, and then like bought a house that had <laughs> a ton of problems like right away, and had to like was <laughs> doing it was working full time and doing his masters, and was like. Yeah, I can't. I'm breaking up with him. <laughs> so, like, like he cried a little bit. Yeah, he like invited me out. He's like, "Hey, man, you want to get a drink tonight?" And I was like, "All right." And I was like, "Are you breaking up with me?" He's like, "Yeah, I, I'm sorry, dude. Like, I just I got too much going on." So we all um, we all mourned the loss for a moment. Yeah, but um, but you know now you know it all led us to the the current lineup, and yeah. I think it's um, you know I'm very grateful because I, you know I I. I'm the chief songwriter, I guess, you know, but um, none of my songs ever turn out the way they're originally written. Like, I, I, I write them and I bring them to the group and everybody else just kind of figures out their own thing to do and it's always way better than anything I would ever <laughs> tell them to do. Right. So, um, it's, it's really, on a very personal level, it's very um, rewarding and I'm very grateful to be surrounded by... Um, just fantastic musicians that help me express myself and all that. So yeah. I think the uh, like the backgrounds of all of us musically come together well. Mm-hmm. Like like Ian was talking about Bear Cub and how they were they were a little louder and, and um, math rock and stuff like that. I come from a straight metal. And, yeah, you used you know, to be like, like a scream rock band, right? Hardcore background, uh, you know, like punk rock too as well and stuff <laughs> like that. Ska at a point and yeah. then like. Yeah. You know, and I don't even know where the hell you two come from. <laughs> you guys are great. Yeah. <laughs> but I've covered up my background well. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny how little I know about your Nikki, the past. violin 
<laughs> we never talk about the past. It's always I, now or the future. <laughs> classically trained. Yeah. Yeah. I used to walk around on the stage with a cord in my hand, waiting for somebody to show me what to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true. You're just looking it's at true. people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, because um, somebody gonna plug me in or uh, what? Well, because Nikki and I were both in um, a band, the Campfire mm, Club, Campfire Club uh, yeah. briefly, which was more folk rock. Um, when I, I played bass in that, and I think that was one of your yeah. early. Oh, it was, maybe is that the first like? Yeah. Rock? yeah, you got me into that band, and you're like, I know a great violinist, and they were like, we want a fiddle player. Right, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try, guys. <laughs> and Nikki's like warming up, playing Vivaldi and shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, still plays Vivaldi. Still plays Vivaldi. And um, so she does her sound check. She just plays yeah. the whole four seasons. <laughs> <laughs> like it's nothing. This should be my sound check. <laughs> Anyway. You're not a violin. I'm not. <laughs> we steal my parts. <laughs> <laughs> Full circle. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of. Uh, What's your background, Chris? Yeah. I'm so I'm like classically trained is yeah. the technical word. I started playing jazz in middle school, and so I did a ton of jazz improv type stuff. In the, you can tell in middle yeah. school, high you school. You get that improv like it's um, so good. So yeah, so, so I play a lot of jazz, especially in high school. I grew up in Michigan, so I played a lot of jazz at clubs in Detroit. Mm-hmm. In high school and college, and so cool. While doing my degree and doing lots of classical things, and then you go out at night and play a Cliff Bells or somewhere in Detroit. <laughs> who knows nice. when? And, um, yeah, so that's kind of my background. And then I just I just like to play, and mm-hmm. so it's one of the things as a bass player. I always I like being a bass player because there's very few musical ensembles that don't have a bass in them. And mm-hmm. so, and I try not to limit myself. If someone's like, hey, we do like 80s covers. And I'm like, I can do that. You can do that with an upright, yeah. right? right? And, well, I mean, and yeah, I, 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 I try to avoid electric like it's the plague. But <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's kind of my thing. I like to play jazz, like to do just kind of anything that, anything I have to play the same way over and over and over again is pretty entertaining to me. And regardless of what the style is, it's just, Fun to make stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, that's a, a lot of my uh, influence on what I would do anytime I'm brought any kind of material from Ian or whoever that I am playing with has to do with improv. A lot of that happens here, you know, in the living room where we just have people over and improv mm-hmm. all night. I mean, and we don't stop until Nick's getting pissed off. <laughs> 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 and, you know, that, that usually is around four or five minutes. <laughs> And so, like, whenever I get together and, like, I get to just know that you haven't heard it either. Yeah. You know, it's really nice to, like, it feels like home to, like, just improv. See, and I have the exact opposite experience. I'm similarly classically slash chorally trained vocalist. And and the improv thing is something that doesn't come natural to me because I'm very much, like, do it the way it's supposed to be done. As a vocalist, it's hard to improv. It I mean, is, yeah. it is, Do but but I think this is really <laughs> yeah, a little scat, a little scat action. But I think that's what's that's what's great about this band though is that it it totally challenges me as a vocalist to to do the improv to kind of make something up, and it's scary because it feels really almost vulnerable in a way because your voice. I mean, that's my instrument is my voice, and like that's it's I own that it's of my person, and it's really Certainly. interesting to just sort of. You know, sometimes just throw it out there, and sometimes it's not going to work, and then sometimes it does. And Absolutely. oh, hey, alarm! How you doing? Oh, Front door. <laughs> Wait, she's supposed to be British. <laughs> she right? should be. She's she not. should be. Front not door. Like- Front door. We're in the that. living room. Or, Front or if door. I can find the thing that Ian posted the other day about the Seinfeld licks. There's a sensor that a yeah. sensor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The door sensor. You walk into a room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You need that. <laughs> if I could have that as my alarm. If Every day. If people came in, they'd like. Just the last Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> they like start dancing. New man. Like, we got <laughs> Yeah. New man. New man. <laughs> wow. Seinfeld reference. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You, know, you never know where these are going to go. That's always <laughs> yeah. For sure. Uh, I'm glad that uh, I listened to that. I'm glad you guys called it an upright bass because that's what I say. And my wife... She played uh, like orchestra in high school, oh. and she doesn't play anymore. But she, you know, I guess they just referred to it as bass. As bass, yeah. And so I say upright, 
because I, I'm being, I've been around enough musicians and that's what I've heard. And like, and, uh, and then, she, you know, she, goes, she just kind of laughs at me and she's like, it's just bass or something. I was like, it's not just bass. I was bass. like, I was like, there's, cause they're, cause they're, <laughs> it makes Double bass, bass sounds. Got a contrabass. It's very classical. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. What do you play? I play the. the... <laughs> I'm a I'm a contrabass. Bass. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's spelled with a K. Then they're extra pretentious. Right. I've heard this joke an, an awful lot about stand-up bass. It's like you know, that's a stand-up guy. Yeah, stand-up. <laughs> it's <an> upright bass. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. But I think you know the Brian Rainey original. Yeah. <laughs> Commonly, if you hear bass, it's referred to a bass guitar in, in right. music. So that's uh, you have to specify. But yeah, like I. Uh, I don't know. She just laughs at me, and I'm like, oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, if you're in an orchestra, yeah, that's nice. a yeah, right. yeah. yeah. She says double True. Bass. So. Sure. Something that was interesting about the show we just played actually with Ruth is it a cuff or a cuff? Yeah. I'm gonna go with a cuff. Hey Ruth, a cuff. Hey Ruth. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry if we're mispronouncing. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and Letter to Memphis was I've never um, witnessed or been part of a production where all three bands had. An upright basis, yeah. and that was very cool. I thought it was really unique. And I, what was really great about that show was I had a friend from college that I had not seen in years who also plays, probably for her, the bass. Yeah. <laughs> and she got to see a production where she saw three upright bassist players, yeah. and that was just so cool. This yeah. is, that's what's so great about live music. Contrabass. <laughs> <laughs> Contraband. I know. Three contraband. contraband. Making <laughs> jokes. There's, maybe there's bourbon here, folks. Three contraband. <laughs> Happy Monday and cheers to bourbon. Right. Yeah. Oh, I, I picked the ball. There's a kitty cat here. <laughs> and two cat ladies present. There are two uh, cat. <laughs> two cat ladies in the band. And a cat man. Was, Drew uh, is totally a cat yeah. man. Yeah, I'm a cat man. <laughs> I'm a cat man. <laughs> 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 cat man. <laughs> there was a there was a cat appearance uh, in last uh, Drew's last. Uh, Drew Drew did like a was sitting on a cajon and like the cat made a break for the <laughs> stairs and, and and Drew like snagged it like before it took off the door. That was smoky. Yeah, it was. Uh, Oh, uh, Smokey's a good boy. He tried to get out, and I like snagged him yeah. and made this big old like horrific sound. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no cats were harmed in uh, yeah. making it. Making this recording. <laughs> the two cat ladies would yeah. see about that. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't let it happen. <laughs> Look at it go! <laughs> 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 well, uh, so you uh, you all played um, three songs live for the show. I figured we'll uh, close out. We'll talk about those and uh, sure. um, so what uh, we got. Uh, First one's our newest one, actually. Yeah, yeah that Clementine. One's, yeah, Clementine. That one's um, very awesome. It, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Um, really fun. Really fun to perform. The, yeah, that one. I, I'm like as 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 simpler for. From my standpoint as a songwriter, I didn't really worry a whole lot about the chord progressions and making it sound interesting and kind of pretentious, which I've done before. <laughs> um, but um, I, that song, like, I think really kind of showcases everybody in the band, like, pretty equally. I mean, there's a bass solo, there's a violin solo, there's crazy harmony, there's Drew doing his thing. Um, it's one that I'm very, very happy with. The yeah. final product for sure, mm-hmm. um, and it came together really quickly too. It, it really did. It, it, yeah. it was, I mean, we just learned it. I don't know, like a month ago. It feels like maybe a little more than that. But yeah. it, I mean, we it came together so fast, and just, it, that's what's great about live music, or not live music, but just being with musicians is how organic the process can be. Well, from what I hear, you know, from uh, doing this show and you know listening to listen to Howard Stern a lot, and he has some of the best musicians come in there and, and talk in length and it seems like that's some of the, the biggest hits come that way is just uh, real quick and you know it's like it's kind of doing it yeah doing it's just it. like it's I don't know so yeah it's the ones that you spend a long time you know the, the I don't know it, but it's just funny how you're like okay mm-hmm. let's just do this and it comes together and that turns out to be the number one single or whatever yeah. it is you know yeah. so it's just kind of yeah. crazy how that happens like that but 
I, th- I think like for us like the like we'll what has inevitably happened is like we'll learn a song and develop it one way and then sooner or later we get bored. somebody <laughs> gets bored with their part and tries doing something new and different and we're like you know what's a great idea that thing you're just doing right now. How do we get that in the song? Yeah. And then um, we sort of just roll with that. Yeah, sure. and that's that's really a lot of fun. There was another... Uh, um, I went to the the Urge 20th anniversary yeah, yeah, yeah. receiving they the gift of flavor. Shows, yeah. well, I went to the recording of the album, the live album cool. that they did, that they just released at the, the pageant. But nice. them talking about playing those songs, you know, 20 years now... Uh, those songs, are, you know, they were. How do you still, make those new? Yeah, yeah. Well, they're, well, they're still not done. Like the kind of thing, like they were saying, like you know, they recorded them twenty years ago, but when they're playing them live now, they play them differently than the record. Mm-hmm. And the songs have adapted over the years, and the same same kind of thing like you're talking about. These songs are never quite ever finished. It's always evolving, and you know, so like uh, even though it might have a recorded version of it, but you know, live, it sh- the show can take on its own. Mm-hmm. So. I thought I find that interesting. You know, that's the, the also the the beauty of live entertainment of going to a mm-hmm. show is like you're never going to see maybe what the happened? same show twice yeah. sometimes. Or yeah. Really, yeah. So I mean, kind of ideally, you don't. Sure. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Like as that's you know. why you go to live music so yeah. that you can. It's it's all about the experience. It's mm-hmm. all about getting yeah. an experience that no one else is going to have in that moment, or yeah. that you're going to share with those people that are there with you. But sure. Outside yeah. of that, it's a very unique moment every time it happens, and that's what's really awesome about live music yeah yeah. like if I want to hear like the song as it has been recorded I'll go home and listen to it yeah right. you know like I, I expect this, the form and everything to kind of be the same but you know I expect that those little moments of like impromptu creativity mm-hmm. um, to happen at a live show and I, I think that's I, that's just one of the best parts of a live show for me yeah. personally I think it's important for the musicians as well to sort of allow that to be something that they can do sort of mm-hmm. like push yourself in that way sort of allow that you know those those moments to happen and not be so uptight about the live performance yeah. and just kind of let it go of you know something didn't go right nobody knows except you <laughs> most of the time <laughs> yeah that's the beauty of it <laughs> yeah so uh we also you also played uh glass mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. manhouse mm-hmm. yeah um I actually glass I wrote at a in a hostel in Portugal. Wow. Actually, they, awesome. right? Um, I was uh, I'm sure I was that douche that just like there was <laughs> so, like, they they had a, a guitar in, like in their like common area or whatever. That, like guy playing and the I was guitar. that fucking dude that was just dicking around on the guitar like whenever anybody's like walking in. And, and I was like, uh, I'm like, uh, I must express myself. Um, hair flip. <laughs> right, yeah. And so that, Probably a beard flip. Yeah, <laughs> More yeah. than a hair flip. Um, and so that's kind of where uh, that, that, I mean, that's kind of the story behind that is... Oh. Um, I mean, that's, like, where it happened, and I ended up writing it over the course of, like, a couple of weeks, actually, um, and I'm, like, that's a, that's another song that I couldn't have imagined, like, the final product that we sure. currently play, um, you know, I mean, even, like, our recording has, you know, Nikki is actually, she does the violin, but she also um, plays wine glasses on yeah. it, um, which is... That was really cool. Somehow we need to get that live one day. We do. That's we hard to travel with. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, that one's. That's what's just so cool about the songs that we do <laughs> is the versatility of the members. Because that the first time I I heard the tune, I played my cajon and did my thing, and there really just wasn't much I could do with it. And we had it that way for maybe the next two times we played, and then we were, we decided something had to change. And I was like, okay, well I'll play the djembe that I have lying around, you mm-hmm. know. And then mm-hmm. I started playing that, and so it really changed the feel of the song. And we fell in love with that sound. Yeah. And that yeah. sound was right. So each time it gets better a little bit, and it's just nice to be able to uh, not not have to stick, because like, you know, a drummer kind of sticks with his drums, or a um, keyboard player kind of just has his keyboard, but if he can do something else that may work better situationally, mm-hmm. I mean, I think it's just... The polished. adaptability of... Yeah. The instruments you can use and do use is it helps the sound very cool. unique. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. When uh, were we uh, looking to get in the studio and record these uh, 
Yeah, so um, we actually were kind of talking about that um, before you got over here. Is um, one of the things is that so we've recorded basically everything except uh, Clementine. We mm-hmm. have recordings of, mm-hmm. and that's what we right. you know are currently selling at shows and stuff. And sure. um, you know, for the most part, that's a, still a, a fairly accurate representation of us, I think. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, I mean, you know, both. Drew and Chris have, you know, because we, there is percussion on the recorded versions, you know, and, um, that we did, that, that we did, you <laughs> that know, was fun. Um, but, you know, Play Drew has, blocks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Drew's come Sorry in and, uh, and made the percussion parts his own, you know, and given his, his own flair and, and Chris, you know, one thing, you know, David is a, a great bassist, but he was a jazz bassist mm-hmm. um, through and through and never learned, you know, never bowed or anything like that. And that's something that Chris has been able to bring to the table. It and, was, there were some songs that really were like wanting that. And then when we finally heard those moments when Chris would do that, we were like, oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. The first one I met that like really effectively used it, but I, I played with some people that use it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Chris, you're just so good. I remember I had somebody that was like actually like good, and I was uh, I remember walking out and thinking that sounded like the Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I love it. Yeah. We just walked around on a wood floor and got the same effect. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, I mean, in particular, I mean, the song that really jumps out is is Virginia, um, yeah. which. Is the that's you know the song that has the the JT reference oh, okay. yeah. um, in it, but uh, you know Chris is you know the, his the part in the very beginning when he comes in and you know he's, like he has this ex, like extension on his bass, so he plays this really low, just fucking just growl, like, <laughs> like bear growl, <laughs> and, like low notes. And I'm, Here, every do time, it, do it, Ian, come on. Whoa. <laughs> It's so great. Every time we play that song, every time he comes in, I'm just like, oh. Yeah, we, yes. we, Ian and I tend to look at each other like, yes, oh. So Every time. And so... Even on stage. For the record, yeah. that was my part. <laughs> right, yeah. I could just play four rockets. Right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, as far as recording, so, you know, for the most part, a lot of those songs um, are still an accurate representation, but... You know these these guys have come in and, and added so much depth. to so much depth really yeah. to um, a lot of the songs that we those are the songs we definitely want to get in the studio and and re-record because those are the ones that it's really worth it to re-record sure. yeah. um, and on top of anything new um, like Clementine. That, yeah. um, and speaking writing. of new, I think well, we've got a really great momentum going on, even though we don't perform a whole lot just yet. Um, I, I think it's. I really see this band going places. I think we've, we're so many. There's so much talent within the five of us, and it's really awesome to see that manifest in the way that it does. And I just want to keep. I think we all want to keep learning new music because mm-hmm. it's it's time. We've been kind of. It feels like I mean, at least for the three of us, Nikki, myself, and Ian, we've been kind of doing this for a minute, and we I think are also feeling the the, the need for the push for new stuff and. Mm-hmm. And we want to, we want, you know, we want the audience to, to want that too. And I think yeah. we've gotten a really great base of, of an audience now and we want to kind of keep impressing them, keep mm-hmm. them around. Sure. Yeah. Well, um, sounds like uh, January 9th will be a good day to impress some people. Yeah. Uh, so yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So come out to the demo, which is a great little venue in town mm-hmm. uh, Manchester Avenue in the Grove next door to the ready room yeah. doors yeah. are at 8 show is at 9pm yeah and, yep, yep, uh, yep. yeah uh, so uh, Typhoon Jackson mm-hmm. and Scarlet, Scar- Scarlet Tanager, Tanager. Mm-hmm. yeah Typhoon Jackson is open in the show um, and there's such a great time they're just a lot of fun just unabashed just yes. enjoyment yes. of yeah. what they do. Yes. Um, and obviously, I mean, I'm sure there are a few of your listeners who have probably heard of Scarlett Tanager and they're crazy talented and her voice is just amazing. So all in all, uh, it should be a very, very excellent show. Right on. Well, like always. Yeah. <laughs> As always, whenever we play Because we're so good. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Twice you got that. You're welcome. I gave it, set that up for you. You did. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, well, thank you all for uh, taking some time out to 
hang out with me and uh, thank you for rocking the yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah, thanks for coming awesome. out. And, yeah, we really I'm, appreciate it. I'm happy Same to first help. First time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the eye roll. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> at this, it's my first time at this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, thanks everybody. <laughs> thank you. Right, thank you. <laughs> thank you.
over again. I dream the same damn dream. Locked in a pen and forced to spend time listening to.